Hey guys, this video is about Gibbs free energy and equilibrium. So we know so far that delta G zero is equal to delta H zero minus T delta S zero. And we also know that at equilibrium, delta G zero is equal to negative RT ln K, the equilibrium constant. Because both of these are equal to delta G zero, we can set them equal to each other. We get delta H zero minus T delta S zero equals negative RT ln K. Rearranging this a little bit, solving for the natural log of the equilibrium constant, we get that equal to negative delta H0 over R times 1 over the temperature in Kelvin plus delta S0 over R. Well, that's really nice because this is the equation of a straight line. Y equals mx plus b, m being the slope, b being the y-intercept. So in this form here, we see that a, a graph of the natural log of k as y versus 1 over the temperature in Kelvin as x. So natural log of k is y, 1 over t in Kelvin is x. The slope of that line, so you know, we do the experiment, we measure the equilibrium constant at various temperatures, um, and we get the equation of the best fit straight line. The slope of that line will be equal to negative delta h0 over r. So all you have to do is take the slope of that line that we get from our equation of the best fit straight line, multiply it by negative r, 8.3145 joules per Kelvin mole, and we have our delta h0. Really nice. Also, the equation of the best fit straight line will give us our y-intercept. Just set that equal to delta S0 over R, so multiply by R, 8.3145 joules per Kelvin mole, and that gives us our delta S0. Really nice. Um, now, now, no, we should note that this assumes that delta H0 and delta S0 do not change over the temperature range being studied. And as a practical matter, that's usually only true for fairly small range of temperatures. But if it is, we can use this. Now, another useful form sometimes in this equation um, comes about if we, only if we only measure two equilibrium constants at two different temperatures, right? So underlying this, we're, we know that the equilibrium constant changes with the temperature. And so if we measure the equilibrium constant at two temperatures, T1 and T2, given us K1 and K2, then we can write the equation for both of those equilibrium constants and temperatures, natural log of K2 and then natural log of K1. And if we subtract these, then um, first the delta S0 over R cancels. Um, using the property of logs that natural log of A minus natural log of B equals natural log of A over B, we get natural log of K2 over K1. And the negative signs move things around a little bit, but we get equals delta H0 over R times 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. Two's on the top here, one's first here. So you know, if we have two points, we can use this equation. So let's do a little example. Um, we measure the equilibrium constant for a particular reaction um, as a function of temperature in Kelvin. So what we're talking about. Um, we make a graph of natural log of K versus one over the temperature in Kelvin, and we get the equation of the best fit straight line. And from that equation, we see that the slope is negative 3.466 times 10 to the third units are Kelvin, and the y-intercept is 12.27 mil units. Um, we want to calculate delta H0, delta S0, delta G0, the equilibrium constant K at 298K Kelvin, and we want to answer the question, is this reaction spontaneous at 298 Kelvin? And while we're at it, we can answer another question. What temperature does this reaction uh, switch from being spontaneous to not spontaneous. Whoops, I got a room there. Right, so that's where else can answer that question. So um, there's a lot of stuff we can do with this equation here. So why don't you guys go ahead and um, work it out, and do your best, and pause the video while you do that, and come on back when you're finished. Welcome back, guys. So, here we go. Let us first um, start with the information that we have. So the slope we have is negative 3.466 times 10 to the third kelvins. Um, and so that means that the slope we know is equal to negative delta H0 over R. So set that equal to negative delta H0 over R. Um, the negatives cancel. We multiply through by R. And now notice 
Um, I, I used the units for R of kilojoules per Kelvin mole, so I divided by 1,000, so I have 0 0.0083145. That's just because um, typically we see enthalpies in terms of, in units rather, of kilojoules per mole instead of joules per mole. Um, but you could do it with, you know, with 8.3145 units would just be joules per mole here. Um, so anyway, I multiply by R and I get 28.82 kilojoules per mole for my delta H, right? Also, we have the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is equal to delta S0 over R, so I just take my y-intercept times R. Here I kept it as joules per Kelvin mole, 8.3145, because the units that we typically see entropies in are joules per Kelvin, joules per Kelvin mole. So we get delta S0 is 102.0 joules per Kelvin mole. Um, so now that we know those two, we can get our, our delta G0 at 298 Kelvin, because that's what we were asked to do. So we just plug in for delta H0, delta S0, plug in our 298 Kelvin there, and we see that we get 28.82 kilojoules per mole minus this term here, and this ends up being negative. So that tells us that this term here is larger than this term here, which is what makes delta G0 negative, which means it is spontaneous at this temperature. Um, <clears throat> now, the temperature at which it switches from being spontaneous to not spontaneous that's the temperature at which delta H0, well, at which, at which the temperature is equal to delta H0 over delta S0. So, um, which means that we can plug in our delta H0, delta S0. We have to be careful with the units, make sure they match up, either both kilojoules or both joules. Here, what I did was I took my um, delta S0 and divided by 1,000 to convert it to kilojoules per Kelvin mole. And we get 282.5 Kelvin. So that means that below um, 282.5 Kelvin, this reaction is non-spontaneous. And we can see that because when this number here is less than 282.5 Kelvin, this term here is um, smaller than our delta H0 term. And because delta H0 is positive, this difference is positive. And delta G0 being um, positive tells us it's non not spontaneous at this temperature. Once we hit 282.5 and above, then this term is larger than this term, and this delta G0, G0 is negative, and it's spontaneous at that temperature. Um, finally, get the equilibrium constant. We know delta G0 equals negative RT ln K. So if we just solve for the equilibrium constant by taking the dividing two by negative RT, um, taking E to both sides, the inverse of the natural log, we get K is equal to E to the negative delta G0 over RT. Um, we plug in, um, we have to make sure the units match up once more. Um, this is the delta G0 was in kilojoules per mole, so I converted my joule, my R to kilojoules per Kelvin mole by dividing by 1,000. We could have done it the other way, get the same answer. And there's our T in Kelvin. And we end up seeing that K is equal to 1.9 um, at this temperature. And that's all there is to that, guys.